Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to database three, where we are going to talk about PostgreSQL with Django, and we are going to briefly talk about relationship, and then we are going to move on to talk about user authentication and session. And this is a very, very practical lecture, which uh, we'll be going through some like, um, you know, coding that can guide you along how do you use Django uh, spelling user authentication system. So yeah. And um, before diving into authentication, actually, let's just briefly uh, talk about relationship because database relationship is actually a pretty important topic. So what's first of all, what's database re relationship? It's kind of like an association between um, different tables. Um, you might like you might learn about one to one relationship, one to money, and many to many in your uh, math class where you learn about, for instance, bijection. Um, so uh, here in database, the world of database is something that's very, very similar. So for instance, one-to-one -one is that both tables can only have one record on each side of the relationship. So first of all, relationship describe um, like a relationship between two different tables. This is like one very important point to know. And also, uh, for a one-to-one -one relationship, each primary key value relates to none or only one record in the related table. Let's actually look at an example here. So here's a one-to-one -one relationship um, between those two tables. Uh, we can see that the personal here has a prime has an employee ID as their like primary key, and here payroll also has their uh, has employee ID as the primary key. As we can see, uh, employee one ten has like only one entry here in personal end. As a result, it only has one entry here in the payroll. And that's a one-to-one -one relationship. Essentially, it's saying that uh, each employee will only have one payroll. And each payroll will only have like apparently one employee. And each employee cannot have like two payroll. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. And also there's one-to-many relationship. So one-to-one -one relationship is essentially like mapping one thing to one thing. So one-to-many is uh, you can map one thing to many things. So here's another example of, um, here's an example of one-to-many relationship between the customers and the others database. As you can see here, the customer 20151 here has been mapped twice, oops, here and here. Um, so customer um, 20151 have two, has two order numbers. As a result, uh, uh, it has actually two entries in the orders table. And this is a one to many relationship. Uh, essentially it's like one customer can order multiple orders, however, like one order cannot be mapped to multiple customer. Essentially like an order cannot be ordered twice by like different people because that doesn't really make sense. So this is a one to money relationship. And finally, we also have many to money relationship. So um, many to money relationship um, is that, so it's also a relationship between two databases and Let's actually just look at an example database. Yeah, so here it's a employees database and also a projects database. So this is a many to many relationship because one employee can work on multiple projects and one project can be worked on by multiple employees at the same time. So for instance, we're working around the house uh, it's worked on by three employees, as you can see here, by the employee ID and also employee 26. Um, they're working on um, both the support of hand gliding and also the work working around the house. So this is a man-to-man -man relationship where like both, uh, both databases can map to many entries. So how do we actually write them in uh, PostgreSQL? 
is fairly simple. So for instance, if we have a one-to-many relationship, simply add models.one-to-many field and then follow by the database name. So for instance, if we have like a um, uh, tutorial, models, model, and the tutorial has, for instance, a description, chart field, and then something else. And you can simply, uh, you can simply uh, build a relationship between the author and the tutorial database by using one too many field. And then after you use this, the tutorials object will store a list of unique uh, ID uh, of like each tutorial that the author has written. So for instance, if I am the author and I have written like three tutorials, um, then the tutorials will be a list containing the three um, unique ID of the tutorial. And this is a way for the database to reference back to itself. So this is how you write a one-to-many field. And it's the same for one-to-one field and also many-to-many -many field. Um, but for many-to-many -many field, you actually need to include like the many-to-many -many field on this side as well, because it's a many-to-many um, -many relationship. So yeah, that's for the relationship in Django. Uh, are there any questions? Cool. Okay, now let's uh, switch gear and talk about user authentication. So user authentication is like one of the most uh, commonly used thing in like industry. I mean, cause like almost every, um, almost every website needs a user login system. So they are very important. And uh, how do developers approach user authentication? It's usually by you leveraging the power of already existing packages. Cause using, if you want to write a user authentication from scratch, it's pretty um, difficult. And Django provides us with a very powerful authentication package called Authentication, which you can simply use uh, within Django. And we will demonstrate this in a moment as well. And before we go into like, how do we implement things, let's actually talk about, let's actually go through some con concepts. So there are mainly two types of authentication. One is session-based authentication and one is token-based authentication. So what's a session-based authentication? Um, so for a session-based authentication, a session is generated when you are, uh, when you try to log into a website. Sometimes you will see like sessions expired shown by some website when you like fail to log in. This is, um, I think it will actually be shown on, on Cal Central as well, but this is essentially like a session-based authentication. So how does session-based authentication work? Is that you will generate a session ID and then the ID will be stored in a cookie. And then after logging, the server will validate the credential, which is like the username and you use the password. And after, if the user's name and password is correct, you will generate a session. And then the session, and then the database will actually store the session and also send the session ID back to the browser which means that the browser can store the session ID as a cookie. And afterwards, when the user tries to log in again, it can simply, the browser can simply send the session ID to the uh, server. And then the server will check the session ID with the session that is stored. If the session ID matches the session that is stored, then it will uh, allow the user to log in. And this is like session-based authentication. And People might ask, why do we do session-based authentication when we can simply like check their password? This is usually because of, um, first of all, um, this is mainly because of time uh, complexity issue. So usually for us to store a password, we will hash that password. Uh, hashing is a very, very um, time consuming, like compared to a simple comparison, hashing is a pretty, com time consuming um, procedure, especially for password hashes. And as a result, um, if we try to like perform hashes 
uh, every time when a user tries to log in, it takes quite a lot of time. Also, like uh, indexing and uh, searching database also takes time. As a result, simply comparing the session ID with the already stored session is much easier. And this is simply a graph that um, showing you how the session works. Uh, the user first sends a post request uh, to the logging uh, API, and then server generates the session ID and send it back. And then when the uh, client tries to log in again, they can simply send the session cookie, which is also like the session ID. And then the server compares the session ID with the cookie and then uh, do accordingly. So yeah. And session ID is stateful, which means that uh, for every time uh, a request is made, a lot of information is being stored uh, both on the browser and also on the server. And this is, so this is session-based authentication. And there's also token-based authentication. Um, it's, it's relatively new, and, uh, but it's pretty useful. So essentially how token-based authentication work is that the server, uh, so first of all, the user will also log in, and then the server will uh, validate with a credential, and then it will generate a token from user data and it will send it back and the token will also be stored in browser. And then the client can add the token to the header and then make a request to the server again. And then the server will validate the token. As you can see, the session base and the token base actually seems very similar. So what's the difference between session base uh, authentication and token based authentication? The main thing is that token based authentication is stateless which means that the browser doesn't need to store any, uh, any extra things. And token is often like parsed by a special parser. And then the browser can directly validate the user's um, credentials this way, instead of like uh, storing a session ID and comparing it with a session. So that's the uh, main difference between a token-based authentication and the session-based authentication. And I would say in practice, you won't worry about how to use token-based versus how to use session-based so much because you're just going to use packages. And those packages will neatly handle this for you. So yeah, but this is just nice to know. The main takeaway is that the token-based is sailless and session-based is stateful. So yeah. Uh, any questions so far? Cool. Okay, now let's go uh, into the exciting stuff where we are going to implement uh, a user authentication system with Django. And before we get started, we actually um, have something pretty fun for this lecture. So essentially, um, instead of like doing a regular Postman thing where we um, test out whether we can log in based on Postman, uh, we've actually have a front end. So this is a pretty practical problem that backend engineers will face in their like daily work. So the front engineer will give you like a, for instance, here is a website that the front engineer has already built. However, the username uh, and the password system uh, has already built. Right now it's just pretty dummy. And what we need to do is to build a user authentication system that allows user to log in and also log out and check stuff in between. So that's how, that's how it go. And now let's get started with the implementation. So first of all, we um, create a new directory for our project. And this is just pretty standard stuff. Uh, so we already have some front-end code in place, as you can see. Uh, all the front-end code is located in this front-end folder uh, underneath like the Django user life folder. And so the Django user live folder will be this Django React templates folder. And yeah, and we will work within this um, project. So first of all, let's get started with creating a uh, Django project. 
And uh, let's go ahead and create our app. So after we create our Jingle project, create our app, as we can see, we have, uh, first of all, uh, the Jingle project here. Also, we have a manage.py, which we already talked about during the last lecture. And we also have an API, which is our app that we have created just now. And uh, as you might discover, we actually didn't need to use a Django, uh, we actually didn't use need to use a PostgreSQL database. That's because Django will actually do the um, user authentication for us. So I guess it's not really PostgreSQL with Django for this lesson. I mean, we, we, we do talk about relationship, but for user authentication, we don't actually need um, PostgreSQL because Django has a user authentication system uh, that's stored like in the file system itself, which means that it's stored on the server, which is uh, pretty neat. So yeah. And now let's get started. Uh, okay, so let's, so this is our uh, code. So first of all, let's actually add uh, our app. We have just created into the installed app which is something that we have, we have also uh, done in the previous lesson. Uh, essentially, after you add in um, the Django, we will look at the uh, API.apps and uh, it will import everything in properly. And our app is going to have the following endpoint to support the front end uh, website. So we'll have uh, API slash login, slash logout, slash session. And this session is essentially to use that check whether a session exists. Also a who am I feature, uh, just for the front to use as you will see uh, uh, later. And now let's go on and try to implement all the view code. Uh, where is it? Okay, copy. So for the views, we're going to put it here. So for all the views, we're going to put inside the API uh, app. And then let's look at each view. So as you can see, we have four view here, login, logout, session, and who am I? A login um, is pretty standard. So first of all, it takes in the data. Um, and notice that, um, Although the Django will handle authentication by itself, you still need to like process all the data. So how will you process this? First of all, you get the data from the request body. Uh, essentially what this will do is that the front end will send you a body full of like username and also password. Uh, in this case, we are actually sending like the password by, um, by it's like, uh, its actual form. For instance, if your password is like one, two, three, four, five, it will actually be sent in as one, two, three, four, five, because this is a pretty dummy um, user authentication system. But what you can do is use some hash function in the uh, front end. And then uh, this way we can ensure that when we are transmitting the password, the password is actually properly hashed. But hashing is like a whole, whole, whole different topic uh, which we can talk about in another day. So yeah, right now we can just store password as it is. So yeah, we'll get the username and also the password. And if the user doesn't provide any username and the password, we'll send them a JSON response saying that, oh, you'll forget the password. And then this is where the magic happens. Uh, we import authenticate from Django um, Contrib contribute the authenticate OS, uh, package. And then the authenticate login and logout function will handle the user authentication for us, which is very neat. So if we simply call this, this will uh, allow us to check whether the uh, user is authenticated, which means that if the username and the password is stored in the user uh, authentication system, if the user, um, uh, if uh, if, it, if it is valid, then you will return a user object uh, containing all the detail for that user. And if the user um, is not like, it's not 
uh, valid, like for instance, their password is not correct, it will return null. Uh, if we receive it null, we'll simply return null credentials saying their password or their um, username is not correct. No sense that we actually don't return like your password is not correct or your username is not correct. We don't want to give the user or the attacker too many information. As a result, we only want to like return uh, invalid credentials. So yeah. And after we uh, log in the user, after we authenticate the user, then we need to log them in. The logging uh, function is also a uh, built-in function from the OS package, which is very nice. Uh, we simply pass in the request and then the user, and this will log the user in. And as a result, we'll pass uh, after the function return, we will uh, return the JSON response successfully logging uh, back to the front end to like explain to the front end that the user is successfully logged in. Uh, any questions for the logging view so far? Oh, I just wondering where is all the like uh, user information stored? Yeah, so is essentially, yeah, it will be stored. It's handled by the uh, Django like user authentication system itself. So it's actually not stored inside a database. It's stored in a file system. Um, I don't actually know like where they're stored because it's like it's like Django um, source code stuff. So. Oh, okay. So then, are there like yeah. Django functions for when you create a user and then it just deals with it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. And later we will show like, so you might notice that we actually don't have like a sign up view. That's because we are going to create our user uh, inside our admin page. Well, I think it will, it will be clearer uh, after a minute, yeah. Cool, so this is the logging view. And now let's look at the logout view. So for the logout view, it's pretty simple. So essentially, uh, we first, first of all, we check whether the current request of user is authenticated. And then if the user, and if the user object that's passing is authenticated, and then we simply response, uh, then we simply return, you are not logging because you are essentially log out. And then, oh, I mean, if it is not authenticated, then we return, you are not logged in simply because uh, uh, if you haven't logged in, you can't really log out. And if the user is authenticated, then we log out the request. And after we run log out request, the uh, Django, oops, let me, okay, sorry about that. Uh, after we uh, log out the request, after we uh, run log out request, the Django uh, authentication system will actually log out uh, the user uh, correspond to that request. And then the user session will be expired and then we'll return successfully log out. So that's for the, uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, so in login view, uh, why is there data equals json.loads request body, but then we don't have that for logout view or any of the other um, functions? Yeah, so uh, essentially why do we have in for the logging view is that we need to get the username and the password. However, for the logout and the, for instance, all the other view, uh, all the data will be stored actually here, requests our user. Oh, okay, yeah, and, that makes um, sense. Yeah, so for this, we actually also access requests our body, but here we'll actually, the user will actually be storing another place. It's storing requests our user. So yeah. Okay. This is just like some convention that uh, we trust the front end people to follow. So yeah. Cool. So this is for the logout view. And for the session view, it's also pretty simple. Uh, essentially, uh, session view is for us to check whether the session is, uh, expect is expired or not. Essentially, uh, if the user has a session, uh, which means that if the user session is not like expired, um, and then the we will send the user will send a session view request, 
and then to check whether the session view is authenticated, we'll simply ask uh, the uh, Django auth package whether the user is authenticated or not. If it is authenticated, then we will return true. If not, we'll return false. And simply also for the who am I view, uh, this is just a view for us to play around. Um, if the request, if the user is not authenticated, we return it's authenticated false. And otherwise, we'll simply return the username um, as a way to show that, um, as a way to show who the user is. So yeah. And this is all the views. These are all the views. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. So here's the view code and which is like where all the meat happens actually. And uh, from now on, we will just like clean things up a little bit and also adding some configuration. So um, first of all, we need to add a URL.py file to API. Let's see, so API URL. And this way we ensure that when the, uh, when we send our requests, we can actually redirect them to the proper view. Essentially like when the user visit login, they will be, um, they will be redirected to this function and this all the function on the view function is imported from here, from the views.py file. And after we have the uh, URLs within the API, we also need to connect it to the um, main URL here. So let's do that right now. So besides admin, we also include the API and we also need to uh, import or include. Cool. And afterwards we actually, so before we run this, let's actually add some setting. So these are some cookie settings that allows us to connect, uh, that actually allows us to connect to the front end. Uh, let's add it here. Cool. Oops. Okay. And now let's try to uh, run migrate and create user to make sure that all the settings is properly uh, configured. And know that we also need to create our super user because we are going to use the super user to um, add more users in. Uh, email address, password. Cool. This time we use some proper password instead of like password. Okay, and we have already had this. Oh yeah, finally to connect the backend with the front end. Uh, all we need to do is to provide a static URL and also the directory to the uh, URL to the static directory. So this is what we need to add. And also some like template engine that we are going to use. So let's add it here. Uh, okay, so there's a question in chat. What's the difference between make migrations and migrate and how often is it necessary? So usually, um, usually make migration, um, I would say make migrate, you, you seldom use make migrations in real life. Usually you will only use migrate. Make migrations, I think this, we, we will only use it in some like very specific uh, situation. But usually we just use um, Python.py migrate. Uh, migrate will help us, for instance, um, do you handle the user authentication and also handle the database uh, update. Uh, I think when the only time when we need to run make migrations is uh, when we uh, first initialize the database. 
So yeah. And let's see, now we have the static URL. So let's delete that. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, and also let's create an index view for our application. Uh, what does this mean is that we essentially need to register uh, the React URL as our um, uh, as our front page. And this way, when the user visit our local host, like uh, the root URL, you will be redirect to this React page instead of like showing a uh, display error. So let's do that. And cool. Wait, why is it? Okay, fine, I'll just add this one. And let's go to the Wait, why is it all my space is messing? From Django, URLs, include, Django, focus, and then, oops. Okay, from Django, okay, okay. And now I think we do this. Cool, great. And yeah, what, and what this will do is uh, you will match uh, the root URL to the React um, to the React uh, folder, to the front end folder. Cool, let's see. And now we should be able to run this. So let's run it. As you can see, you are around the server at a thousand. And cool. As you can see here, we successfully have our React page show up, which is a great sign. However, if we try to log in, as you can see, uh, it's not really logging properly. What we need to do is actually go to the admin page. Uh, let's see if I remember my password. Oh, nice, okay. And then we go to user, and this is the kind of like the uh, Django admin system. We are, I think we also showed this um, during our last lecture. But essentially, how do you add users? Essentially, uh, you click here, add user, and then username, for instance, test user. Uh, I'll just call it, uh, okay. So cool. Uh, let's just more. Yeah, and this way we have successfully created a test user. Uh, notice that here, um, the password is actually showing instead of like the actual password that we have just created, it's actually showing a bunch of like other stuff. And what this is is essentially saying that. This is the algorithm that's used to hash the um, password. And what's the iterations is the number of times that the algorithm has iterated, has been performed on itself, which means that uh, it's hashed once and then it will ha hash it again and it's hashed this many times. And what's the salt? Salt is essentially a thing that's being added to the end of the password. Um, this is just used to, um, ensure that the user's password is not too weak. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, there's a question in chat. So it's saying, and if you made your own front-end file, then you will insert a relative pass there, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. So there are essentially two ways that you can create a front-end file. Um, the first way is, uh, the recommended way is by doing this. So, uh, make all the front file in a separate folder, uh, included by using 
the uh, static URL and also the join path. And the other way is to use the Django default um, template system. Uh, feel free to check it out here. Uh, so Django templates, and then go to templates. Um, Django template is very similar to HTML. It's also a pretty neat way to write uh, HTML code uh, to or, or, or like to write front end code. However, we are going to use React because this is what all the front engineers are learning these days, and also what which you will be learning in our front end primer uh, courses. So yeah, and yeah, so this is all password, and you can also add more personal information later. And this is just a bunch of random stuff. And yeah. And now let's try to log in with this test user. Uh, so let's go to the, go back to this page. Oops, it, it just said you are logged out. You are logged in. So let's try to log in again. Uh, so, wait, what's the, what's the username again? It's okay, it's test user. Uh, let's look out. Test user. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you can see after we type our uh, credential in, it says that you are successfully logged in. And also, there's a who am I um, message. Let's try this out. So after we click who am I, as you can see, it print out you are logging as test user in the console. And though this is only printing one line out in the console, this is this is showing that we have successfully like conduct front and backend, which means that the front end can successfully like curate the backend uh, user authentication system and then fetch the username. Uh, oh yeah, thanks Thanks for the reminder in chat, test user, yeah. I'm glad that I didn't, didn't forget the password. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is for the yeah, cookie authentication system and then we can log out again, and yeah. And I think that's it, yeah. And if you want to uh, get the foreign code, you can feel free to go to this resources. Uh, this lesson is essentially uh, made from this resource. That's pretty nice. So yeah, feel free to take a look. Any questions? Uh, this is kind of uh, a small question, but how come every time you like reloaded it, you had to log out again? Uh, when you mm, were that's like... pretty, yeah, I don't know about that to be honest. Uh, we can actually try that again. Let's Let's try that. I feel like, uh, let's see. Let's test oh, wait, test hyphen user. Okay. And then we refresh. Okay, if we hit refresh, it's not like locked out. And the reason why after we hit refresh, it's not locked out, is that um, it's actually, this is actually something to do with the front end code. Essentially the front end will send a session request to the backend. Uh, I think we can actually see this here, yeah. So after, so after we hit refresh, it will send a session request to the backend and then the backend will return like whether the user is authenticated or not to the front end. And that's why we can keep logging. So yeah. Any other questions? Um, I have a question, but it's not really related to this. Um, uh -huh. the, the way that you showed us that they were storing the password in your admin page, is that like an industry standard, like the way that they use an algorithm to change it up and then hash it and add something like append something to the end? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
go take CS161 if you're interested in this. Uh, they cover like super detail in hashing and how do you store algorithm. Uh, I'm actually taking 161. Essentially why you add a salt is um, hacker can actually hack the very commonly used password many times as, as well. And they can generate like a hash table. We call it like rainbow table. And then they can like match ra the rainbow table to the uh, uh, all the password that the user have like uh, created. And usually some user will be lazy and they will just create a very, very simple password. And if we don't have a salt, then the rainbow table will directly have a match between the password and okay. then the rainbow table. Uh, as a result, the password will be explored. So. No, thank you. Yeah, if you're interested in this, definitely take 161. So a very interesting course. Is it being taught by Weaver? Yeah. <laughs> the most uh, active professor on Reddit. <laughs> cool. I think uh, we will end our lecture recording now.